And those natural gas prices started the day at their lowest level in seven years. That news on the heels of yet another EIA report of storage growth. The administration says storage reached 3.26 trillion cubic feet, another record for August this week. And now there are questions about just how much capacity is left. For a closer look at what this means for independent natural gas producers, Joan Dunlap is with us now live from Houston. She is Vice President of Investor Relations for PetroHawk Energy Corporation. Joan, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Tyler. Let's start off with the supply issues. What is the source in your mind of all this gas that's being pumped in the system right now? Is this high margin or low margin production primarily? Well, you know, this is a time of year when we can typically expect to have uh, higher than uh, normal, if you want to uh, c call it normal, uh, supply in the system. It's, uh, it's uh, coming off of the summer heating season, uh, I mean, uh, summer cooling season. We're going into the winter heating season, and no one is ever very sure of how that's going to play out. What we're looking at, though, is uh, now a very long-term, what has been a very long-term supply build. And with uh, rig counts going down, uh, it seems like month over month for a very long period of time, people have expected to see some sort of uh, decline uh, that they haven't seen in, in real impactful numbers yet. What we're seeing, though, on a state-by-state -state level is some uh, interesting data that's uh, more or less recent. The te Texas uh, gas supply is down. It's actually the production is declining. Uh, we're a big producer in the Eagleford Shale in uh, Texas. Of course, the Barnett Shale is another uh, big source of, of gas in Texas. Also, uh, what's interesting to us is that supplies in Louisiana are up and basically offsetting the declines in the other states. The only states, I think, in March that showed uh, production increases were Louisiana and Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So we still have some, some more recent data to look at since, uh, since March. Uh, of course, decline uh, is expected by most of the research analysts out there, uh, but I think it's important to look at it on a state-by-state -state basis and see that uh, the shale producing states like Louisiana, where PetroHawk is very involved in the Haynesville shale, and uh, uh, those new supplies that have been discovered in the last few years are very uh, making, uh, making some confusion uh, out of the 30,000 foot numbers of the supply numbers. Well, Joan, it sounds like given PetroHawk's involvement in the Eagle Ford, the Haynesville, the Fayetteville, the three that, that you mentioned, shale plays are really playing a major role here and just how prolific they've been through most of this year. Well, it is clear to us that there's a transition that's happening. Uh, it's, it's probably going to become more clear over time. I think everyone expects that to happen. But uh, the more production that comes from shale drilling, which is, uh, in our case, the lower cost, uh, higher margin source for gas, uh, the less that we can expect to come from the conventional source sources that are, uh, have historically supplied the country with gas if gas prices are as low as they are because very few of those producers can make money at those prices. It's even difficult to make a lot of money at the level that we're producing at and we're one of the lowest cost producers in the country. Mm -hmm. So that transition itself has a very meaningful impact. If we uh, can expect that to continue, the shale uh, basins provide a more predictable uh, at least more repeatable pattern of drilling. And that could put us into a situation where you have maybe uh, not a $14 gas environment, but a lower uh, band within which gas operates, which is actually magnificent for the commodity in the sense that we have struggled with having a very cyclical, very volatile commodity that is difficult for manufacturing industry or the uh, utility industry by virtue of electricity production. It's very difficult for them to get comfortable with. They'd rather have a predictable commodity like coal, which is predictably cheap, uh, regardless of the fact that natural gas is more environmentally friendly. Well, regardless of the source of the current bill, Joan, uh, let's talk about the storage issue. Uh, the latest EIA report says that storage right now is at 3.26 TCF. Uh, recently, the Commodity Research Director for Credit Suisse had said that peak U.S. storage capacity is 3.87 TCF. Do you have a feel at PetroHawk for the margin that you're dealing with right now in terms of how much is left in storage capacity? Uh, we pay very close attention to the differentials in our regional areas, our field areas. And uh, what we see right now is actually a silver lining to having low gas prices, which is very tight differentials. Although NYMEX is lower, we are getting and realizing a higher percentage of that price. 
What we might look for is if we get a bump in gas price uh, at some point because uh, uh, production, or it might be a tip off that production is slowing down, um, we might see those uh, differentials widen. Uh, and so that would actually be a good sign. It would be a number that you could see ahead of uh, reported supply numbers. Uh, EIA is very important but it's also uh, a, a latent number sometimes. We tend to look at the field level and try to extrapolate uh, anything of meaning to us uh, that might give us a sense of, of where gas is headed. Mm -hmm. Of uh, course, there's a factor we haven't talked about, which is LNG. It's, it's, um, it's always a swing uh, factor. It's what we call a boogeyman. You can't believe it until you see it. <laughs> and it's, um, it's something we all, uh, we're not experts in because we are uh, domestic drillers, but we always keep an eye on as something that affects the, the macro picture. Now, one of your fellow independents, Joe, in EOG Resources has said that it expects storage to roughly top out at 3.9 TCF, and CEO there has said that, quoting now, it's obviously going to be real close as to whether we have storage and do shut-ins or not. This sounds like a potential problem for every independent out there. That is simply having to shut down because there's nowhere to put the excess. Well, EOG is a very good company. They're, they're one of the best in terms of the research that they do on, um, uh, on pricing. Um, some reservoirs, of course, react okay to being shut in, and some reservoirs do not. And so a producer has to look at their own uh, geologic risk to shutting in a, um, a, a uh, producing well. Um, some of the legacy property uh, uh, legacy properties that uh, are on lift systems and uh, it's like almost flipping a switch. So um, I think you have to play that on, at game day. You have to um, you're, you're obviously a price taker in the scenario that EOG is pointing uh, at, but you have to work the marketing channels as, as hard as you possibly can. And then at, at a financial level, you really have to become. Uh, or what we believe is really important, become a fan of hedging your gas forward mm -hmm. uh, to protect your capital program for just a situation like this. We have been uh, hedging now for uh, about 70% of our expected production. We hedge out uh, 18 months or so. We've gotten now uh, very large volumes hedged for 2010 and 2011 just to protect some of the, what we know will be uh, drilling to protect our uh, leasehold and, and very important assets like the Haynesville Shale. Joan, final question for you. Looking to the immediate future, you've described it as something of a cat and mouse game. Are you essentially waiting for the heating season to see when it starts and what it brings? We always are, every year. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's literally every year everyone seems very surprised at, at, at the numbers and of course this year it is a bit more of a higher magnitude. But every year we sit here with the same uh, watchful look uh, toward the winter season and uh, every year we get a different response. Last year, although it was a very uh, harsh winter, you really didn't see the response uh, that you might expect from speculators in the market. So the market has a mind of its own and uh, in a way it's predictable uh, seasonally and in, in a totally different way. You never know what's coming. All right, Joan Dunlap joining us live from Houston. She is Vice President of Investor Relations for PetroHawk Energy. Joan, thanks again for taking time with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll all wait until the heating season starts. We appreciate it.